Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a budgeting app that I've been using for quite a while now and really do enjoy. It's called Lunch Money. It's an easy to use budgeting app that has been my number one go-to in regards to anything budgeting for quite some time now. I tried Mint and YNAB and some of the other budgeting apps, but none of them really clicked for me. I found them to be a little bit too complex. I prefer something that's more straightforward and easy to use, and that's what brought me towards Lunch Money. It's an app that is very easy to use and just makes sense. And that's why I definitely think it is worth checking out. So in this video, we're gonna walk through how to set up your Lunch Money account uh, and explore the different options that are available to you when getting started. So first thing we'll do is if you go to your web browser and type in Lunch Money uh, into Google and click on the first link, that'll bring you to the landing page uh, that we've just previously seen. In terms of features, Lunch Money does have quite a few features such as multi-currency, crypto portfolio tracking, uh, analytics, and stats and trends. There's quite a few features here and I'm not going to dive deep into them right now, but I can make a future video where uh, I can explain each of these features more in depth and uh, explain what's involved in them. In terms of pricing, one thing to note uh, is Lunch Money is a paid app, uh, but they do offer a 30 day free trial uh, so you can test it out before committing. One other thing is that I also do have a referral link in the description below uh, and on a banner uh, on the screen here that'll get you an additional two weeks uh, free on top of the one month free trial that's given to you by Lunch Money. So this just gives you a little bit extra time to uh, try out the app, test it out, um, see if it works for your budgeting needs uh, before becoming a uh, paid member. In terms of the fees themselves, uh, the monthly subscription is $10 a month. Uh, you can also choose to opt for the annual subscription, which does have the cool little feature of uh, allowing you to pay what you want uh, based on what you think the app is worth to you. So on the lower end, it's uh, $50, and on the upper end, it's $150. Uh, as you move up through the uh, pricing categories, uh, there are some perks that come uh, I think you receive a gift on your first and second anniversary uh, if you go with the $150 option. Uh, the only thing is I'm not sure what those gifts uh, exactly are. Uh, so maybe if someone uh, goes through that, they can put it in the comments and, and, and tell us what those gifts are. Uh, moving on, there is the blog that does have uh, quite a few helpful resources in terms of how-to guides uh, for different uh, aspects of the app. Um, along with some community news and uh, company news about the app itself. Which brings me to my next point, uh, that Lunch Money does have a very active and engaged community, uh, which is a big plus because this means that uh, the app doesn't stay stagnant because the community is there to build add-ons, integrations, uh, and help with features uh, for the app itself. So we can head back to the main page here. Uh, and you can enter your email address here or you can use a link that I mentioned previously uh, which will bring you to a similar page where you'll input your email address and um, other info to sign up and get started on creating your account. So I already have an account so I'm just going to log in here. Take a second to load. So as you can see, it's brought me to the uh, overview page here. Uh, this is a test budget, which is why uh, everything is blank. Um, if you go up to the top here and click this little T, because I called it a test budget, uh, you can see in this little pop-up here that you can have multiple accounts. Now this is a pretty cool feature that Lunch Money has that allows you to maintain multiple budgets, uh, which I found really helpful uh, if you have a partner and you guys have a joint account, but you also have your separate account, um, you can manage those budgets uh, separately. As you can see here, I actually do have my real account as well, um, which has my budget since November of 2023, uh, and I've been using it to fill in my budget every month uh, since then. So first things first, we'll go ahead and create a new budget account here. I will call it Test Budget 2. I'm not going to click uh, any of these... Um, little uh, toggles here and just create new budget. So this will bring you uh, to a little other screen here that has multiple options about how you want to set up your account. 
Uh, so start fresh, set up demo, um, just take you to your account straight. Or there's an option to import data from Mint um, if you had previously uh, used a Mint account. So in this case, we're just going to start with the first option here, uh, which is start fresh. And uh, this kind of helps you a little bit to set up your account um, and gives you a little heads up um, before uh, opening your account. So we'll go next here. And this will bring up this little pop-up here where it says customize your categories. Uh, so this allows you to uh, input the categories that you want to use for your budgets and transactions. Um, you can see there's quite a few here, many of which have already been pre-filled. Um, you can decide to keep them or not. Um, it's up to you. One thing to note here is that I wouldn't get too worried about making sure you select the right categories here because once you do have your account set up, um, you can add and delete categories as you want and make your own custom categories. So whatever you do here is um, adjustable later on. So you can just start with what they give you as a, as a default and then uh, go on from there. Next up, you can set your preferences. Uh, so first thing is you can decide how you want to set up um, your notation. So if you want credits to be negative and debits to be positive or vice versa. You can also uh, set up your uh, month, date, and year format for whatever you prefer. And the final thing here is you can decide if you'll be tracking expenses in uh, multiple currencies. So if you click less, yes here, uh, it'll give you this prompt to um, put in what uh, currencies you'll be uh, tracking in. Again, like I said previously, you can adjust this later on. So it, it's okay if you haven't for sure put in what uh, you'll be using. But as a side note on multiple currencies, what Lunch Money allows you to do is, uh, let's say you travel a lot or split your time between uh, two different countries and have uh, transactions in a foreign uh, currency. You can import those transactions in the foreign currency. So for example, uh, if you were in the United States um, and you had transactions in US dollars, you can import those in US dollars directly into Lunch Money and what Lunch Money will do is they will take the trend, uh, that day's uh, currency exchange rate and, and um, convert that US dollar transaction uh, into your primary currency, which in my case is the Canadian dollar, um, so that everything in my budget and all my transactions uh, are listed as Canadian dollars. Uh, so it just makes it a bit easier to budget, but still allows me to import my currencies in US dollars. So from here we can go next uh, and that's basically it to set up. From here you can import your transactions by linking your bank account, uh, by uploading your bank statements um, or uh, manually adding the transactions through their web uh, interface. There are quite a few options here and I will make another video um, going over the process of um, setting each of these up and importing those transactions um, and what the pros and cons of those uh, are. So from here, we can go take me to my overview, which brings you to the uh, overview page here. So as you can see, there's no accounts or, or, or transactions or anything. Uh, however, the categories are set up um, based on what you had chosen previously. So as you can see in the budget, the categories are here. And if you do go to the setup page and categories, uh, you can see all your categories here. You can add a new category or you can um, delete a category that you didn't want or, or, or weren't using. So now we'll head back up uh, here and we will create a new budget account. Um, we'll call it test budget three, create new budget. Um, and this time we'll choose the second option, which is a setup demo. And for the setup demo account, what, what basically happens is that they pre-fill a lot of the um, options for you, uh, which you'll see here shortly. Takes a little while to load because they're populating everything. So here we're back to the overview page, um, but what's different here is that you can see that uh, there's multiple accounts already here. There's um, a bunch of different transactions. Uh, if we go here, we can see in the budget, there, there's already some activity here. Um, 
like I said previously, there's 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 transactions here. Um, and basically the point of this demo account is to basically get a trial run of what a budget would look like once it has already been filled in and being used for maybe a few months. I think if you go back here, you can see, uh, yeah, it, it's been over a few months. Uh, so obviously this is an, this is an example account. Um, and what this allows you to do is go through this um, account and make changes, uh, play around with it, and sort of see what happens when you make different changes. Um, so this way you can play around and explore without actually making changes to your budget itself. Um, and then when you're ready, you can make those changes on your budget um, as well. So if you already had made a budget, you can go back here and um, make those changes. And if you started the first time on the demo, you can go here and then uh, create a new budget account. That's budget five. Which brings us back to this uh, scenario here. So there's two more options left, the import data from Mint and then the skip the whole walkthrough um, step. In terms of importing data from Mint, uh, it is quite an, quite an involved process and, 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 and there are a few other um, considerations to make. So I might do that in a separate video and, and just go through that whole process about uh, how to import the data from Mint. Uh, so for now, we'll just go to the skip the walkthrough setup and click here. And what this does is brings you back to the overview page with nothing filled in as we'd previously seen. Um, but in this case, everything is completely blank. So there's no categories, nothing. Um, everything is blank. Um, so this is just a full blank slate uh, setup. So if you do want to start completely from scratch, uh, this is the best option for you. This is the option that uh, personally I used um, because I did want to set up everything to my own liking. Um, and so, yeah, you can, you can set up here and then if you want to try something and you don't want to make that commitment on your own budget, like I mentioned before, you can go back to the uh, demo account um, and then play around with those things on the demo account and then go back to your main account uh, and actually make those changes that you wanted to uh, there. So thanks for watching. Um, if there's any questions or future video suggestions, uh, for things you would like to see, feel free to leave them in the comments. Also remember, uh, if you do want to sign up to Lunch Money, you can use my referral link below, uh, which will get you effectively an additional two weeks on top of the one month free trial that's already offered by uh, Lunch Money. And finally, make sure to subscribe and uh, stay tuned to the channel as I will be posting more videos about setting up and working with Lunch Money uh, along with general personal finance and productivity content. Have a good day. Thank you.